Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, as you can see, this time I'm looking at uh, Wild Tracks car here for the uh, Super Famicom. Um, I'm going to convert this into Star Fox 2. Um, now, the real Phoenix has produced this board here. Um, I think you can see his name on it somewhere, actually. Uh, yeah, just about there. It's not going to show for a while, the real Phoenix. Um, you can download this, um, oh, I think, sorry, you can buy this from OSH Park. Um, I'll post some links uh, down below in the description. Um, I think it's a minimum order of three PCBs, but it works out about, I don't know, $7 or something, $9. It's not a lot. Um, so I've ordered a set of three of these. Um, you can see the offshoot there, you know, the bit that joins uh, to the other side. Just need to snap that off, I think. I'll do that with some cutters in a minute and then just file it down a bit, make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, I'm going to use a 27C801 um, EEPROM here, which is the recommended uh, chip used for one of these. Um, and what happens, you remove the SMD chip off the board, which I'll show you in a minute once we get inside there. Solder this, these, these bottom contacts, as you can see. If we just overlap a little bit, um, I should be able to get some solder underneath and then heat it and you know do some sort of drag soldering or something. It's going to be a bit difficult. Um, you can use hot air, I think he recommended using hot air. I don't want to use hot air to solder it on, but I will use hot air to remove the chip, actually, I think. And I'll probably show that. Um, it's, I don't think I've shown that in any of my videos so far. So here's the PCB. Um, you can see the uh, one megabyte chip there. Um, this, hopefully, once that's removed, should fit um, like that. If you just look at these, the bottom connections here, they're going to fit sort of uh, in line with those, um, you know, the connections there on the SMD chip. Uh, you need to relocate the battery. I think the real Phoenix sw swapped it over, stuck it on the other side. Um, so I think I'll do a similar thing actually, um, well an identical thing, stick it on the opposite side there. Um, the reason I picked this particular game, because I think it needs a 512k um, SRAM, uh, you know, for the battery backup there, save states. Um, and this, you know, Wild Tracks is one of the one, one of the few that has a 512k chip. Um, but what you can do is you've only got one of the ones with a 256k chip. Um, I believe there are a couple of jumpers, uh, might be indicated by this here, I'm not sure. It's not really sure what that is, uh, but yeah, you can do some work there, a small modification somewhere. Can't see where that relates to actually, um, and stick a 512k chip on there. Um, so you can use other carts and things, you know, to, for this. Um, it's only using the GSU one. This, you know, it's the the, the first revision of the FX chip. Um, but you can also overclock. I think you can move this. Uh, uh, Resonator or whatever it is over here, swap it out with a like a crystal, um, one of the uh, low power type crystals there. Um, so I might do that. I think is it 22 megahertz or something or 21 megahertz. I might stick a 25 in there and give that a try at some point. But I'll do that after I've got it working with the, the stock um, oscillator um, circuitry there. Um, but right now I'm going to heat this up with some hot air um, and remove that. So I've got the hot air station set to about 415 degrees here actually um, and I did speak to a few people just to see what temperature they use for these sort of things and I think they've gone a little bit lower than I've gone with but um, I tend to find it's quite cold in here at this time of year, the room I'm in. Um, so yeah, the 415 degrees is probably a good thing actually just to help. So we'll just sort of preheat these sides here. probably going to take a minute or two to get this off at least I would think. Just get my pointy tool. So probably approaching temperature now. It's only going for about a minute here. Um, the key is just to go up and down each side a few times like that and then eventually should be able to get it off. So we'll clean that up with some desolder braid now and um, hopefully we should be good to go.
so there you go you can see I've got the chip off um, now get the battery off flip it over to the other side and then we'll solder the adapter onto here so I'm not sure how easy this is going to be so what I've done is I've put some flux on both the top side of those little the tiny little wires there as you can see uh, on the bottom side and I've flowed them all with a bit of solder so uh, that's actually the top side that's going to sit uh, this way up on the board like this but the underneath has got most of the solder um, sorry I can't get my fingers in the right place um, and hopefully I should be able to get that on now it's a question of once and I put some flux on the board as well here now it sits you can see this little hole here accommodates that resistor so you've got to make sure the pins are lined up I don't think you can just about see um, you know this bottom row here you've got to get it just correctly aligned with the row um, of pins underneath and shift it down a little bit sorry I'll just see if I can get that on shot a little bit better um, and just shift it down a little bit so I'm not sure that's lined now actually that's probably a bit better um, and then you need to heat it from the top side so it's a question of do I drag do I heat the um, pins using an standard solder iron or shall I use hot air I'm not sure the best approach and it's very difficult to test connectivity so yeah I'm not whilst this board's really nice in the sense that it just allows you to put a, a dip uh, chip on the, a little bit easier um, it's still not as easy as it could be what would be really nice if this was offset say you could offset it like that now you could see the bottom side here if you just moved it down a tiny tiny little bit you could almost solder that like a QFN chip uh, with a bit of drag soldering along the bottom but if you look at the top connection here um, so I'll see if I can point you can see these pads here are exposed so you could drag solder there make a good connection up here they're not just because of the slight inaccuracy of the board there uh, and I could spend some time filing it down I mean if I move it up so that these are then visible so I can drag solder there these are well out you know they're not, they're not even going to be joined up underneath uh, so yeah alignment is everything with this I might use hot air hot air might be the safest approach with this but I'll need to make sure I've done it sufficiently and I need to make sure it's definitely aligned up properly before I commit to soldering it um, so yeah I'll report back in a minute so what I've done here is just sat it on top made sure it's totally aligned and then used some excess solder and just drag soldered very 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 slowly over these contacts and I did the first few and it held onto the you know I could tell I couldn't lift it it had joined underneath um, and I've just you know done that extensively on both sides here just to make sure it's reasonably well joined I'm not convinced it is that you know you don't know you can't you can see down here a little bit you can see whether you know one or two of the pins are joined definitely I'm just not sure it's completely joined now there is sufficient solder there um, so I think what I'm going to do now is heat it with hot air um, give it a good blast for a, a few minutes really try and keep it as stable as I can use a really low airflow setting just to make sure um, it's as good as it can be really but yeah I, I'm not overly confident that we've got good connections in all places there it's very hard to test as well now there are some vias I'll do some t tests with the connected connectivity in a minute some of these vias and things that might be possible um, but yeah very very tricky very tricky to do indeed um, it's a shame there's not an easier way of doing this so I'll just give it a quick go with the hot air here um, I've done one side actually so I'll just do the bottom side I'm using a magnifier actually just to determine whether the solder has reached a uh, melting point um, so just go gently over here and you can tell it does a shiny like um, you know, it does shiny the solder block but not only that it actually um, changes shape and you can see it flow a little bit so there is value um, in using some magnification while you're actually viewing this yeah I can tell that's pretty much reflowed already there I am using the hot temperature you know 415 degrees um, if you can see any fumes coming off it's just a bit of flux that's just left on there yeah that should do it yeah they're all bubbling up so we'll just leave that minute to cool down careful not to disturb that um, you can see a bit of flux coming off there still and I'll, I'll clean that up with some isoprop brush it all down um, and then attempt to try and do some connectivity testing where I can so a second attempt here, I've had to take the board off, flow some solder on there and I could actually tell when I removed the board there were 
three or four pins that are just not flowed so I've put extra solder onto all of the contacts there with some flux um, and then I'll do the same with this I'll reflow the solder on the underneath make sure there's nice large blobs of solder on there put it back on use hot air again and just hope for the best again this is it's not the easiest thing to do I have to admit well that was an absolute nightmare seriously this chip has been off here something like three times um, you don't bike swap the SMC ROM because there was no header um, it suddenly dawned on me the reason it wasn't working I was getting a black screen the reason it wasn't working is because um, it didn't need bite swapping it must have been, just been like a raw dump which is why there was no header on the file I was using so anyway so I had to take the chip off again um, stuck it back on there still wasn't working I had to take the whole PCB off again with hot you know take the chip off first with hot air then take the PC, the small PCB off with hot air um, and uh, rearrange it so that the little hole you know that accommodates the resistor was made that, that sure that, that the board was totally flat and that was part of the problem that was that the little board there wasn't flat um, and then the final thing I had to set the chip off I think the third time here in order to get it flat because it wasn't flat there was a gap of about half a millimeter or a millimeter underneath and if you don't do that when you come, come to put it back in the shell it will stick I'll show you um, as you can see if you align it like that it just fits now so that's just right it's perhaps could do with a little bit you know a little bit more if anything but you can't go any lower than that um, or the chip just down here you'll see the chip interferes with the bottom of here so you've got to make sure that this dip chip here is as flat with that board as possible um, so in summary the way to do it is to spread the legs a bit and then flatten it on a surface completely and chop off the end of the legs um, and as you can see yeah I've got a reasonable job there it's not as tidy as I would like um, but I'll reassemble this now and I'll show you um, it's working thank god um, and as you can see the battery's on the opposite side there now um, so yeah all in all it's it is a diff pretty difficult because it's almost like I compare this to BGA soldering because it's underneath the PCB you've got to get the right amount of solder and flux under there and you have to get the right temperature on both sides of the connectors you have to almost overheat it in order to ensure that that board makes a good join so you know how long will it last I've got no idea um, hopefully it should be alright because it shouldn't get warm um, and I've used leaded solder so it should be alright um, I'll cover this EEPROM window up as well um, in a minute but I'll, yeah I'll reassemble it anyway and I'll show you it working so we'll get the cart in there now I'll switch it on point with the screen and as you can see it's working Thank God for that, what a nightmare that's been. Far, far, far more effort required to do that than I anticipated. Um, there's that sub, that sub board, you know, the board is just not easy to mount at all. Um, but this is sweet, being able to play this on the actual hardware. See if we can skip this, see if we can get straight into a game. got no idea how you play this. It's apparently a bit more strategic than the first game. You've got to read all this stuff on here. Okay, skip, skip, skip. Okay, it looks like you picked your crew, I think. So uh, I'll do the crystal mod later. Uh, I've got no idea where I'm going here. Hang on. I should be reading all this stuff. Really. Let's just pick somewhere. Let's go to. You have to just, yeah, you just move near them, I think. Uh, and then it goes into some sort of combat thing. So we've got to just take these missiles down with all these things. Played it through to completion, all works fine, no problems at all. It's quite a short game, but I did play it on, play it on the easy mode, so uh, yeah, I'll go back and play on some of the harder difficulties. It's pretty good. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.